they break you down. With the harassment and the mind games that they do, and they make you scared, and so nobody wants to speak up. These former cheerleaders thought they'd landed the opportunity of a lifetime, dancing for the Houston Texans NFL team. They literally grabbed her stomach and they pulled it down, duct taped her stomach. A man reaches over and runs his hand to the center of my crotch and grabs. The nine women are now suing the team, alleging harassment and unfair pay, all part of a culture they say was meant to humiliate and intimidate them. You kind of just learn to bite your tongue and to deal with it. I was so thankful that I was chosen for that experience. Now I just look at those girls on the field and I feel sorry for them. It's just the latest chapter in a movement of women fighting back and saying no more. Do you think this is a byproduct of the Me Too movement? I do. It's women refusing to suffer in silence about economic inequities, unfairness in the workplace. Iconic feminist lawyer Gloria Allred is representing these women. Ainsley Parrish. Ashley Rodriguez. Hannah Turnbow. Kelly Nooner. Bringing their story center stage. I believe that they're being targeted and discriminated against because of their gender. The Houston Texans should not have given us a uniform if they did not want us to become an army. Mm -hmm. And these former cheerleaders this is Ashlyn. are also suing the Texans, as well as the cheerleading coach, Alto Gary. Paige, Ashlyn, Jackie, Danielle. Two of those women spoke for the first time exclusively with ABC News. Making the team was everything that you thought it could be. It was glitter, glitz, glam. I wanted this for years. I was consumed with it. It was my whole life. And then, you know, the bad things started happening. People were being called ugly names and we were being called, you know, jelly belly, chunky cheeks. Danielle and Ashlyn were rookies last season. Ashlyn turned 18 years old just days before trying out. She says her body still looked like a teenager's when she made the team. This is right after I became a Houston Texans cheerleader. But that summer, things changed and she says her coach noticed. I woke up and I looked like a woman and not like a 12 year old girl and she didn't like the way I looked anymore. I remember Coach Alto pulling me aside saying, you look like you ate a plate of salt. She says her coach also told her she looked like she'd gained the freshman 15. Well, I was appalled. I just, you know, my, I've never been called fat. To this day, I still struggle with weight because I was young and I was called fat multiple times. Those women say that because there was a culture of body shaming, some of them and their teammates felt like they couldn't even eat. So I have food. had teammates tell me that they didn't eat. I have you know, too. That they skipped meals. Danielle says she too faced harassment from the coach about her appearance, specifically her race, saying she had to have curly, not straight hair. She said, you're replaceable. There are millions of other Hispanics in Houston that would easily take your spot. She did not have to use the, the term Hispanic. Don't get me wrong, I am proud to be that. But as an employee, she shouldn't separate me from anybody else. The women say the harassment extended into the stadium on game days. Jackie Chambers says part of her job was to entertain fans in the stands and sweep boxes. She says the work could be dangerous, requiring the women to have a safe word to alert security if something got out of hand. That safe word is Toro. You could not guarantee that if you said your safe word, you would be heard. It's loud, people are drinking. Sometimes, if we get lucky, we're with an officer, otherwise we're with a stadium employee. She says one fan sexually assaulted her in the stands. We're running back down the bleachers. A man reaches over from his chair and runs his hand all the way from the bottom of my boot heel, all the way up to the center of my crotch and grabs. Jackie says she reported the incident to her coach, but says she never heard of any follow-up. A lot of people are gonna think, oh, well, you're in a little outfit, and this is what you signed up for. I don't care if, whether it's your mom, whether it's your sister, whether it's your daughter and somebody grabs someone else's crotch, it's not okay. And I thought, wow, working for a billion dollar corporation, they would do something about it and ensure that this didn't happen again. These women say they endured all of this for minimum wage, $7.25 an hour. Despite their contracts stipulating a 30 hour work week, they say they had to be on call 24 seven and were consistently not paid for required activities, including some events and hundreds of hours spent traveling to and from events across the state. I think it's about that time y'all, who's ready? In this Houston Texans website video, Danielle talks about the long hours she says she was putting in. There's a lot of time commitment to this, but I don't think I imagined how much 
um, working a full-time job and being a cheerleader is a, trying to find a balance. Coach Alto would use the term, this is a part-time job with full-time hours, and she wasn't lying. In fact, Coach Alto Gary even says as much in that same video. I say it's a part-time job with full-time hours, if that makes any sense, because it just doesn't stop at practice. Another requirement the women say they weren't paid for? Social media. You're promoting the Houston Texans, and you're not getting a dime for it. They say they were required to tweet multiple times a day during football season and expected to respond to emails and direct messages within 10 minutes. If they didn't, they say there were consequences. They actually would send an email out to a specific person, you know, you didn't reply to this. We expected a prompt reply. If you don't reply next time, this could, you know, um, what did they say? Affect how the rest of your season plays out. Yes, this will affect how the rest of your season plays out. Last week, four of Gloria Allred's clients came to New York City with a copy of their lawsuit against the Texans to hand deliver it to the office of NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. These are working women. They deserve fair pay. ABC News reached out to the NFL for comment, but has not received a response. Based on their level of training, do you think that this should be or is a minimum wage job? This is not a minimum wage job. This job has value to the team and to the brand. It comes into a respect thing, I think. I'm giving you my heart and soul for them to kind of throw it in our face and say, you can work all these hours, do all this stuff for us, bring in all this revenue for us, but you're only worth seven twenty-five. Paying us minimum wage and then not also paying us the hours fully that we, we did work for you, that's just like a slap in the face. Do you make a distinction between the Houston Texans football team and the Houston Texas cheerleaders? Do you hold the team accountable? They got comfortable. Mm -hmm. And us as cheerleaders, as employees, because we were too scared to speak up. In a statement to ABC News, the Houston Texans said in part that they, quote, look forward to vigorously defending ourselves against these allegations. We appreciate the Houston Texans cheerleaders for the positive impact they have made in our community and for the outstanding way they have represented our organization for nearly two decades. If there are things we learn from this process that we feel make our cheer program even better, we will make the necessary adjustments. We do not tolerate mistreatment of our cheer team or our employees at any time. We love our team and yeah. we love our city. And we want the Texans to initiate this change because we know they're capable of it. And we're hoping that the rest of the league will be able to follow their leadership. Change is coming. Well, the question is, are you going to come along with it or be on the wrong side of it? We're on the right side of history. We're going to make a difference. There may be strength in numbers, but these women say there's even more strength in each other. I think we were a phenomenal team, and I think it's a shame that our coach didn't see that. Mm -hmm. Because I think that the more she would bully us and the more she would harass us, the stronger we got. We won't be a cheerleader again, but I get to keep these girls forever. For Nightline, I'm Lindsay Davis in New York. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.